In this video, we're going to learn how to represent a precedence table as a network diagram. Now, there is some terminology here that we need to know. We'll be talking about that as we move through example one. Now, example one says convert the following precedence table down here below into a network diagram. Now, we can see our precedence table here below. A precedence table is really useful because it shows you the order in which activities need to be completed. A network diagram is even better. It represents the same thing, except it makes it more visual and easier to look at. Now, to start our network diagram, we need to draw a single vertex, which represents the start. You might notice that the starting vertex is also known as the source. Sometimes it will say source, sometimes it will say start. When we look at our precedence table, you might notice that activity A does not have any immediate predecessors, meaning that this is the first activity that we need to complete. Now, edges, also known as arcs, are used to represent each activity. So I'm going to draw an edge here, and I'm going to label this as activity A. Our edge also needs to have an arrow to show you the direction we are going. Next, you'll notice that activities B and C come after activity A has completed. We can see that because activity A is the, me the immediate predecessor for both activities B and C. C. Now, before we can continue with activities B and C, activity A needs to be completed first. Now, when we look above, it says that vertices, also known as nodes, represent the completion of an activity. So, to show that activity A has completed, we need to finish it with a vertex. Now, this vertex also represents what is known as an event. An event represents the completion of an activity. All right, now that activity A has completed, we can carry on with activities B and C. So we have two edges representing activities B and C. We need to show the direction of these activities with an arrow as well. Now, a lot of people are really tempted to put a vertex down straight away to show that these activities have been completed. I'm going to recommend that you don't do this, at least not straight away. Anyway, let's now look at the next activity, activity D. Activity D comes after activity B. So now you can complete activity B because otherwise, you can't carry on with activity D, remembering that we need to show the direction of this activity. Next, we have activity E, which comes after activity C. So now I can complete activity C so that I can carry on with activity E. You might notice that both activities D and E have not been completed yet, and I do have a reason for doing this. Next, you'll see that we want to continue on with activity F, which comes after activity D. So we'll finish off activity D with a vertex, and we'll continue on with activity F. We're now going to look at activity G. You might see that activity G comes after activities E and F. And we're faced with a bit of an issue here. I'm going to do it in red, because this is going to be wrong. If it comes after F, I need to finish F and have an edge labelled as G. And if it also comes after activity E, I need to finish activity E and label my edge as G as well. Now, this is an issue because you're not allowed to have two edges with the same letter or the same activity. You're only allowed one edge per activity. So to fix this, I'm going to start by rubbing out my mistake, and I'm going to extend edge E. So if I extend this line, I'm going to bring it all the way up here, 
and I'm going to put down a single vertex which represents the completion of both edges E and F or activities E and F on my diagram. And from there, I will put down an edge which represents activity G. You can see that this works quite well because when activities E and F finish together or are completed together, you then can have a single edge for activity G. Some of you may have figured out why I like to wait before drawing a vertex. When we look at edge E, you might have noticed that we had to extend this edge. Had we drawn a vertex earlier, we would not have been able to extend edge E. We need to show the completion of activity G by drawing a vertex. This vertex is known as the finish, or also known as the sink, and this represents the completion of not just activity G, but the whole project. So let's revise what we have learned. We had edges, also known as arcs, and they represent each activity. They had to have an arrow to show the direction they go in and a letter to show which activity they represent. Our vertices or nodes represent the completion of an activity. We call this an event. So this node represents the completion of activity A. This node represents the completion of both activities E and F. And then we also had what is known as our source and our sink. The source is our starting point and the sink is our finishing point. Now, it almost looks like we're finished, but there's one thing I want to point out, and that is that uh, a lot of mathematicians do not like to have edges which are curved, like edge E here, for example. I have seen examples where they have curved edges, but it's best practiced to have straight lines. And we can fix that up quite easily by rubbing out edge E and just redrawing it with a straight line. Hopefully your line is going to be straighter than the one I just drew now. Anyway, that concludes example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.